Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to this insane build. This is a guitar that I am making out of a chunk of 42,000 year old swamp cowrie from New Zealand. It is incredible. It's gorgeous. It's very soft. It's gone through the cactus juice process. You saw this in the last video. Uh, we've done that three or four times now. So the wood itself is quite hard, but the process of getting there, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Burn it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that this bit has uh, made me a little bit nervous. I sincerely hope that it has worked as expected. We've still got that curve. If you can flatten a fretboard down by hand, and I can, then it's fine. The, the truss rod is 100% going to counteract any issues. So I need to put this through the sander thicknesser and see how much material I've got left. And uh, yeah, should be okay. Well, that went very well. So essentially what happened was the wood was so soft that it essentially rippled. And quite frankly, that's, that's not what you want uh, on a fretboard or on a gluing joint of any sort. It also, for the masking tape and super glue trick, uh, didn't actually want to hold on because uh, the resin was so thick in parts. Uh, I've not flattened it 100%, there's just an edge here, but this is going to be the top of the fretboard where I'm going to be creating a radius, that's fine. Uh, it is about six millimeters. Oh my God, somebody's stolen my micrometer. I mean, that somebody probably was past me, but <sighs> yeah, anyway, I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. And uh, the most important bit is I could put a I could put a dent in the fretboard with my thumbnail uh, before it went through this process. That is not possible anymore. This means that uh, we've got a green light. We can carry on with the build as actually planned, <laughs> which um, happens more often than not. We don't, for legal purposes, want to have the exact headstock. 
something close. So essentially, I'm going to leave a little bit of space, cut the excess off on the bandsaw, and uh, yeah, see what happens. Okay, time has come to do the truss rod, not only route the truss rod, uh, and of course we're going dual action, but also carbon fiber stiffening rods. So essentially I'm going to use this crimson template, uh, route down the center, and then for the stiffening rods I'm going to use, I could use this template, or you can use a fence going down the edge of the, uh, uh, the fretboard neck thing. Back to the masking tape and super glue. Again. Still. This is my day. Fine, huh? Okay, double check the length first. 
so I've already marked out where my nut is going to go. And the end of the truss rod needs to be around about the furthest that side of the nut line. So in this case I can see where the uh, masking tape is through the centre so I can mark out where I want it on the neck and that's much easier than earlier techniques. It's probably not necessary to cut away the excess masking tape and quite the, uh, to quite the extent that I do, but uh, I don't like the idea of it catching and uh, sort of fouling things off or maybe potentially ripping the, uh, the template off. So I do this most times. Okay, set the depth stop. So it's nine millimeters we're after, or essentially that. All right, back from back, back from the other side of the building. I can't tell you how many times I've run from here to there because I forgot dust mask or goggles or the wrong route a bit, etc. But I could do with the exercise. Let's be honest. At this stage, I, I ended up using the template because the uh, the fence from the router was. Uh, coming up against this, the edges of the fretboard, the neck, headstock thing. I am enjoying today, honest. I have, I have a truss rod uh, cavity almost right, there's a little bit of uh, hand chiseling to do there, and the sides for the carbon fibre stiffening rods are yes. done. Uh, I'm happy. Let's get the chisel out and uh, yeah, fit these things, shall we? This wood is very soft, but uh, the multi-laminate construction has obviously strengthened everything up. Add in a dual action truss rod and some carbon fiber stiffening rods, and yeah, we're gonna be okay. The Tudor saw works quite well for cutting carbon fiber. Hacksaw too. My thought was that uh, I was going to come in this morning, take these out, cut the uh, excess headstock material off and get that sorted and then glue the fretboard on. And uh, the reality is, is that not, yeah, that is not required. Uh, I think I would rather glue the fretboard on and then do that cut. You might notice that I don't often do Fender style headstocks on my guitars. So there we go. Let's, uh, let's get these uh, stiffening rods glued in and a fretboard on, shall we? When smashing super glue into tight slots like that, please wear goggles.
Whoops. I slipped. There we go. Back to my uh, normal thing. Truss rods tend to rattle inside of cavities if there's any space, but also if it's loose. So for example, this section here, there's a lot of movement. It's, it's welded at two ends and uh, there's movement there. If there's any tension on the truss rod, that's fine. But uh, if you happen to have it set in the middle, you need to have something to counteract that rattle. So with the sticky area on the outside, I roll up some masking tape and stick that there. And that just keeps everything, everything tight and uh, most importantly, quiet. There you go. Now the other thing is I'm going to be cutting my fret slots by hand after the fretboard is in rather than slotting it on a machine and then using locating bins etc. So as long as I've got this covered and I've got enough room uh, at the end there I, I'm not too worried about the positioning of the fretboard itself. That'll do nicely. Let's clear this up shall we? I used to put masking tape over the entire truss rod channel. I no longer think that's actually necessary. Unless you get huge amounts of glue in there, it's not going to gum up any mechanisms. You want to avoid around the threaded areas, but uh, yeah, for the general rest of the truss rod, you're fine. Okay, so my fretboard is relatively short. <laughs> Hold on, wrong camera. There you go. So I, I, I need to be relatively close to the end of the neck. Essentially. I want a little bit of over overhang, but not too much. I also want to clamp from one end to the other. If you clamp in the middle and go out or clamp from the edges and go in, you're going to potentially clamp in uh, a tension that you don't want to have. Although I suppose if you were very clever, you could, uh, <laughs> you could use that to fix a neck blank that's got a bit of a back bow in it or something, I would uh, s suggest using a plane for that instead. All right, let's give it some excess, shall we? And then we can see what our joint's actually doing. Hopefully behaving. time has come. I'm not going to get, I nearly hit myself with that. I'm not going to get huge amounts uh, more done in this video. My week has gone totally away from me. Uh, you have no idea. Um, but we have progress. And uh, 
it feels like a guitar, it feels nice and solid. Uh, let us cut away the excess section of the headstock, cut away the excess uh, of the fretboard, and uh, I'll put a radius on it, and then uh, we'll call that a day. Off to the machine room, shall we? So being very, very careful on the bandsaw, cut away the excess fretboard material, leaving one or two millimeters, no more than that, even with wood this soft. Uh, moving on to a router table. And uh, this is one of those things, you don't want to take too much material away uh, with each pass. So uh, using a bearing cutter and staying away from the end of the fretboard, because uh, I do want a fretboard overhang to cover the joint. Uh, at the very least, uh, the last thing you want to do is um, is route away that material as well. We'll hit that with a, with a small hand plane a little bit later on. The fretboard now flush to the rest of the neck, uh, perfectly, perfectly cut. It's on to rather precariously cutting away the excess material from the headstock. Uh, this is two or three millimeters and uh, you know, it's sacrificial. If I had the off cuts from the uh, headstock available from where I'd cut the shape out, I'd probably try and make something uh, to essentially make the headstock rectangular so that everything, so there's just no worry about this at all. Uh, as it was though, I'm fairly confident in my skills. This is a fun idea. This is Plectrum depth. Should we make some plectrums out of this uh, 42,000 year old chunk of wood? It's very soft, but uh, yeah, with the cactus juice or maybe flooding with super glue, that could be a fun side video. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Moving on to thicknessing the headstock. Again, there are ways to do this that involve very carefully setting up thicknessing jigs etc. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm doing it by eye to a line and yes I'm not entirely sure where my pencil is right now so I'm using a pen uh, for today. But yeah the uh, oscillating spindle and belt sander is a perfect tool for this job. The smaller edge of the teardrop shape uh, gets into that curve quite nicely and the end result is rather pleasing. There are multiple ways to put a radius on the fretboard. I'm going to use a plane to start and then a radius block after that. And uh, of course, I'm matching the 12 inch radius on the Fender Acoustasonic because, uh, well, that's what my client is comfortable with. Now I'm planing alongside the center line. If I, if I match the, the radius of the strings, if I planed along where the strings were, I'd be creating a conical or a, <laughs> a conical radius. Compound, that's the word I'm looking for. I don't want a compound radius. Onto a 12 inch radius block. Okay, so I have yet to, to carve the neck and 
the act of carving the neck is going to potentially release some tension. Remember, we've, we've made this with multi-multi laminates. It's as stable as I can make with, uh, with wood like this. It's got carbon fiber stiffening rods. It has a dual action truss rod, but I still want that to be perfectly flat. So I'm going to rough it out with this 12 inch, very coarse uh, radius block, cut the fret slots, then, well, basically start the carving process. I'm going to start the faceting, not finish the carving. I'm going to leave a nice flat on, on the back with which to, uh, uh, when I'm doing the frets, I like having a flat chunk of wood behind there. It is easier to, to install the frets at that point. But essentially, once I've done the basic carving, I will then sit watch the neck, make sure it doesn't move, then put the frets in after I'm sure that it's perfectly flat. everybody being really quiet while I'm filming. Stay still, no talking. The radius is in place and the neck, the neck is a neck. It's done, we've got, well, we've got the bulk of a guitar sorted. Next week I need to route out the neck pockets so that it fits into the body. I need to finalize the carving on the body and do some sanding on there. I need to uh, uh, cut the fret slots. I need to cut the, or install the inlays and uh, drill out the tuners. There's still a lot of work to be done. But uh, I do feel at this point that I have broken the back of this build and uh, yeah, we can pr progress now. Uh, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, uh, check out Crimson Guitars, Great Guitar Giveaway, GGBO, all of that jazz, all linked below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.